Hello, how you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's it with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> devil are you this week everything good yeah chin up it's gonna get better because this is the two shot podcast and this is episode 41 with matt berry i know exciting yeah more of that in a second so what's going on thanks so much for being here and joining us subscribing and being part of the two shot pod family you know it means the world we couldn't do it without you. We wouldn't want to do it without you. But you're here, and it's great news. What's going on on our end? Well, May is a ridiculously busy month for us. You know, we've got the live shows in Northwich with Dave Haslam and Paddy Constein. We've got bath festivals with Charlie Cooper and Daisy May Cooper from this country. Very exciting. And slap bang in the middle of that, we've got the British Podcast Awards. Speaking of the awards, a huge thank you to everybody that's taken the time to click the link and vote for us on the Listener's Choice Award. The Best Culture Podcast, that's the judges. They've got to decide that. We shall see. But yeah, there's still time to vote if you haven't done it already. It's the 17th of May. It's the closing date. Just click on the link, go to our Twitter page, or it might be on the Facebook page. If not, uh, look... I've been boring people, I'll retweet it again. If you could do, take, you know, take 30 seconds, just do that. Show your love, that would be incredible. So what else has been going on? So last Saturday, I was invited to Cheltenham Poetry Festival to introduce a brilliant self poet. If you don't know, he's called JB Barrington. And heads up, he is going to be coming on the podcast in, I think, June, uh, depending on dates. It's always dependent on dates. But yeah, we're going to get him on. And um, they asked me to do a little intro for him. I said, hopefully, some nice things. He, he's just, he's a force. I, I, I really love his work. And as I was writing a little intro for him, I found something, a little piece. And I read it out to the audience. And it seemed to connect with them. So what I thought I'd do is I'd read it to you now. It's very short. Don't fast forward. It seemed to be very apt for what we do on the podcast. So I'm going to read it to you now. Go into the arts. I'm not kidding. The arts are not a way to make a living. They are a very human way of making life more bearable. Practicing an art, no matter how well or badly is a way to make your soul grow, for heaven's sake. Sing in the shower, dance to the radio, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem. Do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. You will have created something. That's it. It's pretty good, isn't it? Anyway, this is episode 41 with Matt Berry. Me and Matt have been talking for quite a while, trying to organise dates. As I've said, you know, it's always about dates with everybody. But we've managed to sort it. And here it is. It was the hottest day of the year so far in Soho. We met up with Matt. We had some ice cold drinks. We cooled down. And now I do have to say... Myself and producer Griff just want to apologise because it was so busy and so hot. There, there's some sort of outside noise, little bits of talking, but hopefully after you know ten or fifteen minutes or so, your ears will adjust and you'll kind of block it out and listen to the smooth sounds of Mister Matt Berry. Enjoy, and I'll see you at the end. <laughs> Do you know the one thing I've never known about, and you never told me about, and forgive me if I get this wrong? Yeah. Fear pushed through the ring. What's that? Oh, fucking hell. And we're going back? We're going yeah. back too much? It's a bitch for Exorcist. 
Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is that? that? Was, um, yeah, I think I got kicked out for that. That was the thing that I... I believe it was... You might have got sacked. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was in between Tempin and just before the London Dungeon. Well, not just before, a few years before the London Dungeon. Um, I was... I started off as a runner on one of those computer games um, shows. Games, whatever. I can't even remember what this fucking... But the... Um, was that a Channel 4 thing? I don't even... I think it was Sky. Right. It wasn't even that. And, Please can't um, be. Before Sky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it was, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I was, I was just a runner. And then, I don't know... Um, they kind of drafted me in to do these. If there's like a uh, a new, I mean, because I do nothing. I still don't know anything about computer games. I've got no interest in any of that at all. No. Um, but if there was, you know, like a new sort of product or whatever, they they got me to do sort of pieces to camera. You know, sort of saying this is the new. You know, and I didn't. Know, I think it's because I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and and then that kind of led to me doing something every week which led to me doing I had the idea of doing something involving The Exorcist I mean it was someone's product and then I called it Fear Pushed Through the Ring it wasn't called that and they got the, the arse out and then that was it, I was out, I was kicked out for that But did they give you free range to say to well, sort of do whatever you want? Kind of, which was yeah but they, they would they didn't really kind of sort of check up on what we were doing, you know, until it was a bit too late, which is what basically happened with that. But I, I honestly <laughs> had totally forgotten about that. Oh, really? You <laughs> brought that up, yeah. I was trying to find an in to our conversation, and I thought, in all our years of friendship, that's I, haven't, I didn't know about that, so I thought, well... I got, that's yeah, I got fired from lots of jobs. I mean, that was just... One, one of you know, one of many, for doing things like that. Well, I've told this story shit loads of times, but the um... well, don't tell it now. No, no, <laughs> don't you tell don't it want again. To... <laughs> 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 no, but, um, I did telly sales. You know, like everyone does, and um, they had these big signs on your booth saying "Don't eat and drink at your workspace," and I was, I had a. A double decker, and I was eating me double decker, and the bloke made me stand up in front of everyone and says, uh, "What? Can you not read those signs?" And I'm like thinking, "What the fuck is this guy talking about?" And um, he says, "It says no eating and drinking. What have you got in your hand?" And I'm, I couldn't, you know, fuck, you couldn't sort of believe that this was actually going on. So I think before he kind of said the words, you know, you, I'd already got me bag on and I was up and I did I can I can remember that I didn't properly because I was so fuming I didn't un properly unplug my headphones from the thing so I just walked off and this lead went <laughs> you know and yeah that was it I was kicked out of that one for eating a fucking double, double decker. decker yeah what was school like growing up um we are going back now we're going way back way back it was it was alright it was did you enjoy it? not particularly um, I liked bits of it um, seeing me mates was the best thing like because it was before they gave a shit if you if you showed any interest in uh, you know in a subject like I think these days from what I've heard um, if they spot that you're interested in something quite early on you know then they make a point you know of getting you to do, you know, sort of classes in these things, yeah. you know, and this, that, and the other. Well, this was obviously before then. And I was obviously, you know, and I was interested in music. Um, From an early age? Yeah, I could, because my parents bought me this organ and just stuck it in my bedroom, and then, but didn't kind of hassle me to get any lessons. So I just started to play, and because I couldn't read any music, I would just write my own stuff. And... Um, so, you know, when I was at school, you know, if they had, you know, a piano, you know, I would kind of get on it. But, um, 
I wasn't allowed to do any kind of music lessons because I didn't want to read music, you know, and I couldn't read music and I wasn't interested in reading music. I'm still not, you know, you know, because you always think it might sort of take away the fun or the magic of it. Yeah. So. Or the creativity. Yeah. So, you know, I should have been doing, you know, I should have been like doing music, you know, and I wasn't because, you know, I, you know, so. Because they want you to follow a certain yeah. path and a certain So structure. I was doing shit that I wasn't interested in for, for you know, through most of school. Yeah. And I think that was important because it kind of made me think that when this is done, I'm never going to be doing that again. I'm never going to be doing shit that I'm not interested in because that's, you know, that's not a healthy way to go. So, I, you know, I largely sort of haven't touched wood. Now you've, yeah, you've always... So you, that filtered down at an early age that you would only do stuff... Well, I can only kind of see that now. Yeah. At, at the time, I, I wouldn't have known that. You know, it would have just been... This is bullshit. I don't want to do any of these things. You know, I want to do my own thing. Yeah. So I think it probably might have come from that. Or was it just you? You got a sister, aren't you? Yeah. And is she older or younger? Uh, Eighteen months older. What does she do? Uh, a lawyer. She. Do you never think about following that path like that? No. <laughs> it's never for you. No. 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 I've got no interest because it's. No. I mean. Yeah, no, I've got to be kind of creating something. Was the academia always pushed to one side? No, in the I was interested, or? but like it's just too much of a too much of a, a sort of force in me. It's that that kind of got me out of you know out of bed. Sport didn't really get me out of bed, you know, and um, you know, maths certainly didn't get me out of bed. You know, it was always either t- to write some, you know, or to do some music. That was the only things, you know, that would, you know, get me out. Was drama on your curriculum when you were at school? Not really, because, again, it was before that, you know, became a, you know, a sort of serious lesson. You know, it was just a fuck about when yeah. I was, you know, like you do, so you know... The, those, the dosses and the time wasters yeah, and going to drama. a yeah. devised thing about sort of taking drugs. <laughs> just say no, Zamo. That kind of shit, yeah. you know, that kind of... Theatre and entertainment. No, sorry, theatre and education. education. Yeah, entertainment. Theatre and entertainment. Yeah, it wasn't entertainment. That, that's a good song title, isn't it? <laughs> theatre and entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was, honestly, that, that was as much as I did. Um, the, you know, once a week some guy would come from fuck knows where and go... Um, you know, just imagine, you know, your best friend's taking drugs. Have a conversation with each other. You know, what would you say to him? That was as much as we did. Yeah. Um, it's not helpful. Well, <laughs> I just... I didn't mind it, because, you know, it was, you know... It was, some, it than, was always a break from the norm. Better than writing... Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I didn't... You know, but I didn't know what... You know, I didn't know what it was about, you know, or what... And... Yeah, so that kind of thing... You know, I never even sort of really kind of, can, you know, considered doing anything like that at an early age. So the music was the big passion at such an early age? Well, I liked perform. you know, I, I liked other people, you know, um, doing stuff. But, you know, I never really thought about myself doing anything, you know, kind of... Putting yourself into the into the... The, the spotlight type of thing. You never, Not really, no. 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 It's just about the creativity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the biggest, the biggest thing was my mum got me, she got me tubular bells for a 15, 15th birthday or something, or it could even be like 40. And then I remember reading the back of that, and then I looked into it, and he was 17 when he made that. 18. Was he? Yeah. And and obviously being sort of 14, I only had a, a few years to go. I'm thinking, fucking it, if he can do that, then I need to sort it out. <laughs> and fast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that was it. That, that was a big old thing. Because I was obviously very, you know, I mean, everyone's heard that album. You know, and to think that was done by a kid is... Phenomenal. I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know he was that young at yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did your mum do, Matt? Uh, she was a nurse. <laughs> she was a nurse. Yeah, so, like, 
not you know my parents had very normal jobs and your dad what did he do he worked for um he did a, a bunch of different things when we were really young he was a taxi driver and then this isn't in london though is it no where is it bedford bedford yeah so and then he worked for um a company that sold i think it was machinery to tighten nuts and bolts or something stuff that he you know he you know that he understood i mean it's basically cars yeah were always his thing cars were his thing you know so yeah so they you know kind of normal stuff where do you think the the creativity came from or more importantly, almost, well, it didn't come from them. The musical, yeah, it didn't come from them because the most. I mean, I've told this as well, but like the, um, they had one album and one tape basically between them. One was Strauss Waltz's that I think they got free with something. The tape was my dad's, and it was funny cricket commentary <laughs> throughout the ages. <laughs> Those were the only fucking <laughs> things they had. <laughs> so that was, so you know, the music side of it was definitely not from them. Wow, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Mm. But my parents were the same. They never. They maybe had like a few, ta- three tapes. Yeah, that they would very rarely play. Yeah, I mean, the, like, the radio would always be BBC Radio Lancashire. Today, right. you know, a local news and yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. that you need to know when yeah. actually you're really damned. No, because it's crazy, because they're probably the same age as my parents, you know, probably, you know the yeah. same age as yours. Born in that golden... I mean, it is, you know, people going about, you know, you just kind of sort of glorify the past, you know, when the future, you know, when the sort of present is duff. Yeah. And I understand that, but I honestly think, you know, that they were, you know, in terms of... You know, sort of music. Well, I think it's been, you know, you could kind of safely say that that was the golden time. You know, that was, you know, the birth of rock and roll. You know, you had, the, you know, you had, you know, I don't need to say, it, you know, you had everything. Yeah. yeah. And yet my parents had no, no records. And no interest. <laughs> no. No. It's... And mine, mine neither. But I can't even dream of not having music in the house nowadays. The first no, thing totally. I do in the morning before I put the kettle on, he's put the radio on. And it's on well, all I, day. If I've been working on something and I haven't got it right and then I had the idea sort of during the night, I just get up and <laughs> go in, like totally naked, you know, mostly, and, and just <laughs> fire it all up and then just do what I've got to do. So it's the first thing, you know, before I've done anything. Um, yeah, and... So, you know, even before I've kind of woken up, you know, there's music going on. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, like you, yeah, I couldn't, you know, it would be a very bleak place. Yeah, but it it lifts everything. And I learn so much all the time. It's funny because when, and I've never done this to my son, I've never forced anything on him at Mm. all. And because we don't have a television, we sort of, he watches, he goes to the cinema, and we, yeah, he yeah. does watch things, uh, you know, a weekend and stuff, but it's not on constantly, it's not there. No, totally. All yeah, the yeah. time. But he's got into soundtracks of films. Oh, brilliant. All, all totally organic from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, his passion, he loves John Williams, and he loves Hans Zimmer. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I used to collect movie soundtracks on yeah. vinyl as a kid but I've, I've never forced that on him it's weird yeah, yeah, that it's yeah. just happened and I think that's because there's... well kids do like that sort of thing don't yeah. they they like very kind of sort of dramatic things what in music plays with their imagination yeah. and it's s- like War of the Worlds was big with every kid you know God, I loved War of the Worlds yeah I mean every kid did because it was it did that thing where um, it was always exciting I mean, as an album, that doesn't move much sort of dynamic-wise, but, you know, as a kid, you know, a sort of headphone experience, it's the most exciting thing going. Yeah. There's a sound you've never heard before. There's this, that, you know, when the orchestra comes in, you know, you almost shit yourself. You know, all well, these it is, things. it is otherworldly, isn't it? They, yeah, they yeah, kind yeah. of got, it, got that really right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And sort of movie sound, yeah, for a, a little kid. I mean, I can totally understand yeah. why he's into it. I know. And he's really, like, I took him to 
the Royal Albert Hall because it was like a uh, sort of John Williams kind of retrospective with the orchestra. And yeah. He was, was glued. And it's really hard for him to sit still because of his dyspraxia. And he was yeah, yeah, always yeah. fucking like on the move. And he just loved it. Yeah. And to see that in a child, just it's well, the I best mean, thing in the world. Whatever you think of it, whether you don't like it, I mean, a lot of people don't, yeah, but I th- it was good that Doctor Who, you know, the new ones, used an orchestra and stuff because that got that got kids into it um they did like a doctor who proms i think yeah that they the kids went to they're doing it all the time yeah like, i think that was a good idea because you know it kind of because there's nothing like going to um the royal festival hall you know we're all out, you know and then hearing a full orchestra no at full pelt yeah like you know it almost you know it makes you you know your teeth rattle it's like so, such a fucking powerful thing that, you know, we've all been to sort of raves and stuff, which is a different thing, you know. Completely. It's a, it's a 20-foot speaker. It's, <clears throat> you know, I mean, that just, you know, makes your chest cave in. But this is different. You yeah. Know, when you sit in front of an orchestra, it is like nothing else. There's bass. I mean, yeah. It well, is. It, you know, instead of not being able to hear for 48 hours yeah. after, it, it, it kind of all consumes you and sort of, Fills you from the inside yeah. instead of yeah, it's, yeah. your ears. Yeah, it's a really exciting thing. Yeah. Did you go to a lot of gigs when mm. you were younger? Yeah. Yeah, I had quite a good. There's a place called um, Esquires in terrible fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> They're always called shit like that. But the um, we had one in Blackpool called Your Father's Mustache. Well, see, well, that's better. That's yeah, at least cool. that's. But yeah. there was also another one called Rumours. That's terrible, isn't it? Rumours. Uh, rumours. And it used We're to going be... tonight. We're Ru- going tonight, Greg. Rumours. I see it, rumours. And there used to be a rumour that you go to <laughs> rumours if you're a, a younger man because that's where the older ladies hang oh, out. Oh, God, there was yeah, always that. really nasty yeah, stuff. there was it's, always that. It's Blackpool. We had that, in, but yeah, no, every town had that, though, <laughs> yeah. didn't they? If you go on a Thursday night, there's a lot of... You're guaranteed. God, we've gone right off pace now, haven't we? Yeah, but the... Um... Let's go back to gigs. Yeah, Esquires. <laughs> was, Esquires. Yeah, that was, but it was, it still is. It's, I was, I was there actually last Sunday. It's fantastic because you got an amazing sort of like club room downstairs that isn't too big, you know, like the disco bit. Yeah. And then upstairs is where you, you saw the live bands. So I, I loved it there because you could see, and every band played there, you know, like big bands sort of played. Um, was it a, what was the capacity? It's upstairs. It's no more than hundred, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it's any any more than that. Right, so nice. Oh yeah, compact. Yeah, venue. yeah, yeah. And I saw everything. You know, I saw the shark. You know, I saw Ocean Colour. You know, before they were loads of bands. I missed out on Nirvana. That I was really that I'm now really no, pissed off. They played that, yeah, they did. Or it was that, or they played. They might have played at the one in Elstow. They played a Bedford date. Jesus, that I didn't go to. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly right. kicking yourself <laughs> yeah. for years. Yeah, but it's funny because um, Smells Like Teen Spirit was the was introduced in that disco. So this is like bef- you know. The bloke that used to do the disco there was called Paul or Phil. Uh, he was amazing, and uh, he had record. You know, he had, you know he sort of had the things spinning before they were out and stuff. Yeah. So I remember everyone just you know when we first heard that, and just thinking, what the fuck is this? This is the loudest thing I've ever heard. It kind of changed everything. Yeah. Well, I played it to my granddad at the time. I said, what do you think of this? And I played him some like Teen Spirit. And he said, that sounds like someone dragging chains. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I know. He hadn't heard anything like it either. And it, and it was, yeah, I can, yeah I, can, I can kind of, you know, sort of remember where I was. And, you know, that was being played week after week. I was thinking, why is he playing this weird song? And then it was like, this is brilliant. Yeah. This thing is fucking brilliant. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, yeah, I mean, those, 
if you get if you if you're in a little town and you've got a really good sort of music scene, it's you know there's nothing like it. No. If you you know if you haven't, I think that's a real shame. Well, just get to London, I suppose, or get to your nearest. You know, Manchester's yeah. doing great stuff at the moment for small venues, but no, sure, yeah, it, go to your nearest. Go to your nearest, town. yeah. yeah. yeah but yeah. I mean. I remember it was quite difficult in Blackpool, like when I was, not that it's about me, but as soon as we're talking about music, because it was when the dance scene was really, like the rave, it was really yeah, mega yeah, popular, yeah. and I just wasn't into all no, that no. bollocks. But there was one club called Jenks Bar. Yeah. Proper grime, sticky carpets, the usual. Yeah. And it was there on a Friday night, and that's where, you know, your few hundred would go. Yeah. And that's where I first heard Smells Like Teen yeah. Spirit. And it, Everybody stopped, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then they just kind of raced and was yeah, well, about on the dance floor. Yeah, because it was up against; it was in the same chart and being played at, at the same time as um, "Pump Up the Jam." You know all that that shit that was on Radio One at the time. The uh, "Pump Up the Jam," dum, 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 dum. yeah, "Peace in the Valley" and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Peace in the Valley. <laughs> <laughs> All that, and which I also hated. Yeah. I was thinking, this is... Because, I mean, Radio 1 was fucking horrendous then. Because you had that mixed with some late Genesis, you know, and like, and s- s- sort of solo sting. Yeah. Stuff that I really didn't want to fucking listen to at all. And, you know, so then when the grunge thing, you know, and the guitar thing kind of happened, it really did poke out because it was up against bullshit yeah and you know really kind of cynically bad you know sort of music and these um, were people making music and you felt that that there was a need to make this yeah, music yeah, they yeah. had to do it yeah yeah well it was a band for a start yeah and that was like that was you know i was all for that it wasn't some guy just behind some yeah because sort of that's technology what technology pushing yeah. button yeah because in the late 80s that's all that was going on it was a really kind of nasty time sort of music wise and also radio wise there wasn't anything apart from like late night on radio one yeah that, of course that, yeah that, that, oh that no was no when it was always to get be a bit decent serious. things yeah you know like someone say you know well why weren't you listening to the smiths you know well yeah i was doing but like they'd already started there was nothing starting for me no you know in 88 you know 89 you know i wanted something you know that'd be that was that was my that was yeah, ours yeah 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 you know i was listening to everything that was good you know but it, like you say you know i wanted my own thing yeah you know? yeah it was yeah it was a great time for that and then obviously you know that led to the whole you know, where Radio 1 was just, like, guitar music for, like, ten years nearly. Wasn't yeah, it? and then it kind of morphed and changed, and yeah. then you get too old and you go, oh, I am I'm, i can't listen to Radio 1 now, I don't no. know anything of what they're playing, but then again, I'm a little bit too young for Radio 2 and yeah. Steve Wright's big show. Yeah. Uh, you know, happy that... Or Jimmy Young. Or t- <laughs> <laughs> After school, what happened? What was your? Did you have any sort of yeah, well, the focus thing, or plan? Yeah, because the thing that I got into where I didn't need um, to master any kind of theory as such was painting. So that I kind of discovered just before sixth form. And how did you discover that? Because it's such a it's such a a skill you I, I always think I remember doing art at school and going well it was acrylic paint was a big deal oh. because it was cheap and I discovered acrylic paint and I was like I don't have to wait for this to fucking dry like the oils I can get because you know I, I've got a very short attention span I, if it's a bit of music I kind of need to do it within the half hour otherwise you know it might go yeah and it's the same you know we're like painting for me so this stuff was sort of perfect because it could dry real quick, which meant that I could go, if it didn't work out, I could move on to something else, you know, or, you know, it was done and dusted. So that I was, I was, that was a big part of it. And, you know, sort of from that, I did um, A-level art and then um, found out, you know, and then that's it, you know, went to university did the, the, the did art, art and did, the, did you feel that the art and the music 
kind of worked in tandem with each other Absolutely. for your sort yeah, of yeah, release. Yeah. yeah, yeah, completely. Well, f- for me, they were the same. They were in the same part of the brain, you know. Like I, um, yeah, it's all sort of imagery and kind of colours. Whether it's you know doing a song or you know painting. And that was university. What did you? Did art. Art. Yeah, it was. It was great. You know, it was. Was the art overtaking the music at any point? They were kind of. They were sort of running at the same time. Right. Um, and I was. I was really lucky because it was the last year where you didn't have to buy all your paints and all your sort of canvases and that. The year after me was when what's his face put in the. It cost you a grand order, and then it just got worse and worse, yeah, didn't it? That's a fucking huge expense. Yeah. So I was, I was so lucky that I was the last year where you went to, you know, you went to university, and there was a storeroom where you could just go and pick, grab as many... Pick what you want. Yeah. Wow. And that, that is totally not the case now. No. And hasn't been since, you know. I was there in 93 or whatever. Fuck. 94. How yeah. great because you were given you were given a playground. Yeah, well, no, but and it stopped you from being sort of lazy. I mean, of course you were lazy. Every student is, but you know, um, you you were like, great, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I've got, you know, I've got all this, you know, as opposed to you know, you kind of coming to coming to university with all your paints, you know, yeah. kind of knowing what you got to do. But this was different. This felt free, you know, and I don't know. It's you know, I was just really lucky that that was you know that was the last mm-hmm. year because I couldn't have afforded it otherwise I didn't have any money you know what I mean like, yeah I was skin I mean I stopped sort of smoking because I couldn't afford it then where was your university sorry Nottingham Nottingham yeah how did you find Nottingham I loved it yeah it was amazing good city you know yeah, yeah yeah and you could and the cool thing about being there is I could go to Manchester at the weekend and for a few quid on the old um on the national thingy express yeah and uh so i got to see all that you know what i mean so it was just like this is the best fucking you know and i was away from home so yeah it was great you know and that was, was a great time for manchester yeah it that was absolutely all kind was. of blowing up there it absolutely was it was amazing did you see lots of gigs there in manchester yeah i saw a few yeah and you know you just stay on people's floors you know you, d- you just kind of Sort of, sort of tell your housemates, you know, that you were going just for the night, and you'd be there all weekend. Yeah, yeah. no, it's brilliant, and um, and that was at the height of um, Oasis, so that would have been about ninety five. Yeah, and that, and I mean, it was that was huge, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I remember when I first got given, definitely maybe by a, a girlfriend, and it was a little bit like the Nirvana thing it was changing something again yeah 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 going, you haven't heard anything like this and the balls on well, her well that was the thing yeah because I can remember that um, it was because I was in Halls of Residence for the first year and it was coming out of everyone's window that album and I remember when I first heard it and thought he's got some fucking nuts doing this this is someone <laughs> yeah. else's song do you know what I mean and yeah. they're thinking good on him man like, he's totally like kind of fronting it out yeah. and and then I'd see him be interviewed and he didn't give a shit you know and people would kind of go you know are you worried that people think yeah and like, no I'm, you know and yeah I admired that a lot because yeah, I remember hearing um, cigarettes and alcohol and thinking this is Mark Bowler what the fuck is this guy doing yeah, so was wasn't it <laughs> But shameless. I know, which I love. Yeah. If you're going to do it, do yeah, it yeah, with yeah. enough conviction. Didn't give a fuck. Yeah. It went straight in the charts and he, you know, and he's got his royalties, you know, and he's got his name on the song. You know, no, you know, good on him. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was, that was a big deal, wasn't it? That was huge. It was massive, wasn't it? Yeah. I got given it outside Central Pier in Blackpool and I yeah. raced home to put it on my yeah midi hi-fi yeah <laughs> with terrible speakers <laughs> and it still sounded amazing yeah 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 so what was the plan at university were you just going to sort of discover your art without a plan or was there a, a no, end I was, game I, I, I was thinking if I'm lucky um, I might be able to make some money out of doing art um, 
I just, it was all about kind of not doing a normal thing. That was my kind of main intention when yeah. I sort of graduated. Um, that's why I went straight into sort of temp jobs because I, I knew in the back of my head that if I got like a, a sort of proper job... You could get stuck. Well, it'd just be hard to get yourself out of it. Yeah. Because who was it said... I can't remember who said it. It might be an Eddie Izzard or someone like that said, you know, you've got to burn your bridges, you know, in terms of getting a normal job, you know, and make sure you can't. And I remember at the time thinking, yeah, that's that's quite sound, you know. I've, I can't put myself in a sort of sort of situation, you know, where I might get, you know, kind of like promoted or been offered more money. Yeah. Not that I ever would have done, but... <laughs> You know what I mean by yeah. that? You know, so it was, it was a bit like having a plan B. Yeah, it's like if you've got so much to fall back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's quite easy to go. Oh, well, do you know what? I'll take the easy road there, yeah. or I won't carry on with my convictions. No, and, totally. on the, this road. Yeah, but like I'm the worst person when they, you know, I mean I'm sure it's it, it's it's also happened to you where the schools ask you to go back to talk to the kids or whatever. Yeah, and. I, I I wouldn't know what the hell to say because there I didn't have a plan and I don't have any advice because I don't know how to do it. It's just you know I ended up doing it. I kind of drifted into it. I didn't at uh, age fifteen go. I'm going to you know be doing comedy. I'm going to be because I wouldn't have done because no. I didn't even consider it. Even at twenty three, twenty five, I'd never thought about doing comedy. You know, it was never. <laughs> A, it was still art, it was still music. Yeah, and not working, you know, not doing... Not doing a, a proper job, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was the main focus, <laughs> you know, keeping those balls in the... You know, not getting, sort of falling through the crack and, you know... So when did the comedy creep in? It was late. Um, How? How did it? Well, because... It's funny, we sort of surrounded by Noel Fielding's pictures here. I know. <laughs> well, it was, it was really through him. Like, we, um, he was doing these nights, these boosh nights at the... Um, so um, had a chicken? Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I've got vague memories of them, and it's just, uh, there'd be a few people that were packed. I mean, I can't remember how packed they were. Everyone sort of says they were packed, but I, I don't remember. Um... And, um, you know, and I was like doing, I, I kind of was doing sort of songs and then because their thing was a comedy thing, I kind of adapted the songs to be, you know, more kind of sort of performance and stupid really an odd and sort of jarring. That was the thing. To fit in with their style. Well, no, or... not, not to fit in with their style, but <clears throat> it was... All I was, all I was interested in is, like, they're thinking they're seeing some earnest, young, you know, sort of singer-songwriter, and then he'll spin it on his head. Yeah. And that was what I was interested in, and that was where it all started from. And Noel, to his credit, you know, and I'll always, um, you know, be indebted to him for this, you know, he gave me the stage, you know, in order to, you know, to sort of do that. And for those early things, you know, I used to kind of come on and sing these songs that would then go odd and I would, you know, sort of kind of pretend to commit, you know, like take a load of pills and stuff. And, you know, like stuff that I thought, you know, might be interesting yeah. if I was to be watching it. Yeah. And it just went from there. But you got a taste for it. Well, it was interesting. That was the thing. And while I was kind of sort of creating it, you know, and sort of coming up with things, it was interesting. Yeah. It didn't always work, but, you know, these things don't when no, you do life stuff. No, of course they don't. You know, the, it's... That's kind of why, that's kind of a great yeah. way because only then can you learn and discover yeah. something new. And it just so happened that um, Matt Holness and um, Iowadi were... Uh, Richard were in... We're in we're in the audience, and they were kind of putting together um, the Dark Place TV thing. They 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 won the Edinburgh thing, which I wasn't involved with, 
And, you know, they were thinking about, you know, what they might do, you know, for the TV. And they, they had an idea for a Spanish doctor. And they, you know, and then that, that was it. I was in that. And I hadn't done anything before that, you know. No, the only sort of thing I'd done was work in the London Dungeon. In how, terms of performance got, and we jokes. Need to, we need to go back a bit. <laughs> we, how did you end up from Tampin to the London Dungeon? Because I had a mate who was doing it. And he said, this is a great laugh. He goes, and it doesn't matter how hungover you are, you can just rock up to this place and you're meant to look like shit because you've got to wear all this makeup. So I, that was the reason why I did it. What an incentive. Yeah, it was. Because doing temping and doing, you know, like jobs that, you know, that your heart's not in, you do tend to kind of drink more. And surrounded by all yeah. those people that yeah. don't want to be there. Yeah. So, the, you know, what do you do in this country? You know, you go to the pub. When yeah. So I was kind of hung over quite a lot. I mean, I, you know, it's not good to, you know, sort of talk about it sort of glibly, you know, with people that have drink problems and yeah. this, that and the other. But No, I don't think you're making light of it at all. No, so but, you know, but that's the, that is the, that's the kind of... Well, it is over here. ...sort of truth. Yeah. I, did that job because this guy said this is a great job you know you can kind of you know you you just put this shit on your face and then you scare people and you know and I'm getting paid and I thought well you know compared to me being in this parking fine office you know I'm gonna do that yeah and then that was it and I'll just you stayed there for quite a long time I was there for a year a year yeah I loved it yeah you did I know because it was, it was great fun, you know. It was <laughs> and interesting to you, apart from being in a bloody office, yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. was it? Did you leave there because of Dark Place? Yeah, yeah, I did. It was the weirdest thing. I within that year, so I think it was sort of two thousand and one or two thousand and two. I can't remember, but by the end of my year in the dungeon I was told on the Monday that we'd be starting to rehearse for the TV thing on Wednesday and then we'd be sort of filming um, in you know like in the next month or so so I thought shit well I've got to leave then yeah and I remember saying to someone that I said I, I don't think I can come in after Wednesday uh, you know what do you mean so I said I I don't think I can come in again. And uh, but you know, I kept it sweet because I thought you know if this if it don't work out, yeah, this I'm falls the, on its ass. I yeah. need to come back here. Yeah. So you know, it was all amicable. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Do you think if the, the that timing of dark place hadn't happened, you'd have carried on staying working there for I, a bit? I don't know. I don't, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably but, a year was enough. Yeah. Um, you know, there's. I mean, it, no. It, it's a great place, you know, for an for a, you know a performer, you know, whether you're an actor or a sort of comic, to go back to to to. I mean, like it was really useful in terms of timing and things. You know, you could kind of sort of try jokes out, yeah, on the public, um, and yeah, you know, it was really useful for that, you know, and you got your timing right because you had to, and you were doing otherwise it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. they just stare back at you. You know, you'd feel like a dickhead, and. <laughs> They'd be, you know, you'd be doing, you know, dozens of shows a day. So if you hadn't got your timing right after that, you know, then... There's something wrong. There's something wrong with you, yeah. You should be doing something <laughs> yeah. else. But, you know, it was great practice for that. You know, if I thought something, you know, I kind of slip it in. And you could just do it? Yeah. Yeah, they didn't keep tabs on you when I was there. It's not like now. There's a script that everyone has to do because it's been... Oh, is there? It's yeah. all been changed. Yeah, yeah. So I was, like, doing this... You know, all these, all this kind of stuff, you know. Um, yeah. And if they, you know, if they really laughed, you know, then you just do it again, you know. And then, you know, if they didn't, you'd kind of wonder why, you know, then you'd go back and alter it slightly, you know, and then you'd get a laugh. And Every did... day, all day long. So it was a bit like doing warm-up shows. Yeah, or being, um, yeah, you know, or the sort of red coat thing. Yeah. All day long. Yeah. And how did you feel doing Dark Place? Because it was 
I don't really touch on jobs on the podcast, but this is really interesting because it was your first time. Yeah, doing I enjoyed like that. it. That was the thing. And if I hadn't had done, then you probably wouldn't be talking. To me. <laughs> you know, I'd have done something else. Yeah, and I creatively it was satisfying. Um, and I didn't know that it would be. I, I didn't know what to expect. Like I, I. I knew that I was kind of lucky that I'd been given this chance to do something from Matt, you know, and from Richard. Um, so I wasn't going to, you know, I was going to do it the best I could, but yeah. I didn't know whether I'd like it or not because yeah. I hadn't done anything like that before. You know, I, I, you know, I didn't know what it was going to be like. Sometimes it's so nice going in with no expectations, though. Well, I mean, I had no expectations. I had no experience. You know, I had nothing up my sleeve. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, it just so happened, you know, that I thought it was really good fun, you know, and a good way to spend your day. Yeah. And then that was it, I suppose. Still succeeding with not actually getting a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. When did, I know you've, you've touched on this before because <clears throat> I know you've spoken about it, but when did insomnia kick in? Um, I think it's always been there in... Uh, some form yeah it's kind of comes and you know it kind of comes and goes you know like a really bad cold it's yeah it's just you know how you kind of sort of wrestle with it that's the thing how do, how do you well I know I, you get I know that if you're feeling creative and you're not saying you'll get up and you'll go and write that's, a, that's a fucking album yeah that, <laughs> that's how I deal with it by going to do something with the time rather than just lie and go why the f-, you know and just be kind of tiny self frustrated yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is it therapeutic to do that? Well, I, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. It's the only way, you know, it's the only way that I can kind of deal with it. And then you might get two years, you know, where you don't suffer from it, you know, at all. And then it can come back and then it can go again, you know. So, yeah, it's just what you do with it, I think. You know, and I've... I don't want to be, you know, a victim of it. You know, I want it to work in my favour. Try and have some sort of control over yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And exactly is it get, that. Is it, is it, I know it's peaks and troughs, but is it, is it getting better? Um, or is it, is, is it, as you say, it's like a cold? It yeah, it kind goes. of comes and goes, yeah. It sort of comes and goes. But, and then it can kind of disappear completely. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's a weird thing. But the thing is not to be, you know, not to be kind of negative about it, because I think... Or a slave to it. Yeah, because then you're a victim of it. And yeah. I don't want to be, you know, I want it to... I want it to serve me, you know, rather than me be on the end of it. If that makes any sense. No, it does. Do you ever think now, comparing... Not comparing, but your art and your music and your sort of telly work... Do they are they all at a level, or does some sometimes something outweighs well, the other? Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean I I love them all, but I never dream about comedy or sort of performance. Whereas I dream about guitars, yeah, <laughs> which is pathetic, <laughs> no. you know. Or I'll dream about you know um, a visual thing, you know, or. Um, what to do organ. with a song. Yeah, 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 I do, yeah. Um, but I'm not saying, you know, that they're any more important. It's just, you know, I'm probably more passionate about those things, I think. Though, you know, saying that, that you know, right, you know, there's times when we were doing, when we were doing Toast and, you know, I thought... I was the most happy, you know, because it was what I wanted to do and it was yeah. exactly what I had in my head, you know, and the, and I was with bloody, you know, I was, I was with really good actors yeah. and they were, they were doing exactly what I had in my head, you know, and it, and it worked. And that was as good as, you know, when that was working, that was as good as any song sort of situation, you know, any kind of sort of music situation. It was, you know, I, I loved it. You know, at times when we were doing that, you know, if it all kind of, you know, if it clicks and it works, yeah. yeah, you know, it's the same for you, isn't it? You know, I mean, we've talked about this. You know, if you're there with, with decent co-workers, it's 
It's a dream. Yeah, it's the best thing. Yeah. You're really lucky, though. Um, you know, because if you're not... You're, you're someone who I always look at and go, he's constantly creative because he doesn't... You don't rest on your laurels and... No. You certainly don't suffer fools. No. And it's like, well, well, if you're not going out on tour, like, with the band, then you're doing some painting or you're writing. You've constantly yeah. got those three gears on the go. Whereas, yeah. you know, like some actors, they go, well, I, I don't really know what to do if I'm not right. acting. Yeah, you've, I mean, got, you've got amazing creative outputs. Well, because I can't do anything else, you know what I mean? Like, that was kind of proven to me at school and, you know, so, and while I was kind of temping, I can't do anything else. Those are the only things I can do. Yeah. And... I love doing them, you, you know what I mean? You know, they yeah. keep me sort of driven. You know, I'm... Even on, like, the train coming up to London yesterday, I had... Um, I saw the opening for one of the episodes of this new thing that I'm doing. And nowadays, I've got... My mobile's got that um, quick record thing. Yeah. So you look like a fucking nutcase, you know, <laughs> going, so... Rabbit, you know, and then you just go through it all on the thing. But thank God for it, you know, yeah. it's really, really useful. Well, yeah. It saves you getting your notebook out and your pencil. Yeah, 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 just... yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, there's... I think if you open yourself up to to these things, you know, because I know that that's sort of coming up. I know, I've, you know, we've got to finish these episodes because we film in November. Yeah. So, you know, your brain's constantly... It's like I saw Dirty Harry and I was thinking, how could I make that, you know, 19... You know, how could I... Bits of that. Because, you know, it's it's a fantastic film and it's kind of in the area that we're at, but, you know, in the 1970s. Yeah. You know, so just things, you know, that you kind of see and stick in your mind, you know, and, yeah, I can't turn it off, I don't suppose. Is there a need? Is there always a need or is it just... I enjoy it, you know. I enjoy making albums, you know. I enjoy... I say about turning off, you know, I don't want that to be confused with these comics that can't turn it off and, you know, and are always on. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I don't think that would be misconstrued. <laughs> no. You know, that, that kind of exhausting... Yeah. ...trait. But, no, it's just more, you know, just seeing something or, you know, I mean, you know... You might say something, you know, that sort of happened to you last week, and then I might think that might be a great thing for this character, you know. It's just any, you know, any odd thing. It's, I think when you know that there's something coming up, you know, you, it's like, you know, when you get a character and you, you're more sensitive to, to that character, you know, that certain sort of character, you know, or you might think of someone who's a bit like this this particular character. Yeah. And you can't really think of anything else for a while, you know, until you've kind of nailed it. You know, it's that. Yeah. It's no different, I don't think. And do you, are you good at, do you need deadlines when, like, when you're writing or are you ha quite happy to be unstructured in that way? Well. Or do you work better to a deadline? Yeah, I think, I think so, to a deadline. Like, I don't sit at a desk and write. I kind of write a lot on my iPad, which is, you go, how the fucking hell do you do that? But, like, I don't write a lot, do you know what I mean? Like, if I have an idea and it's sort of half a page and that's all that I need to do, and that's usually in bed with the iPad, you know, with final draft. Yeah. And you just quickly do it, and then, you know, I might not write anything for a couple of days, and then I might, you know, write six pages on one idea. So it's... You know, it's when it hits. So you're not one of those that gets up and goes, right, it's nine o'clock. I couldn't do I'm that, you know. Write. There's a lot that do do that. Yeah, well, yeah. And they go into an office-type situation with another writer and sit and... Are they, are they doing some Skype with another writer? Yeah. And... No, you know, I admire that, but that's not how... That's not how I can do it. I mean, Arthur and I, he wrote, you know, in Dublin, you know, and I was writing... You know, in London, we would phone each other every couple of weeks. Um, you know, funny, funny phone calls. So I could say, for instance, I don't, because I'd, I'd written this exorcist thing for Toast, and um, 
<laughs> there wasn't keen on it at all. He's like going, I don't know about this exit. You know, and it's that those kind of conversations, you know, then you go, No, I think I think it could be funny. And then you know, you've got to explain why, you know, and then Yeah. But he he's amazing. Like he would because, I mean, you've met Arthur, you know yeah. Arthur. Yeah, I mean, he's the most calm, quiet, softly spoken, sort of chilled out fella. And then he'll send me something like, you know, like, sort of hideous, you know, like really disgusting. <laughs> and he's think, where the fucking hell did he come up with that? But that's what I love, you know. You, you, you know, I love, you know, sort of being taken by surprise by people like that. You know, really calm people. Then they just <laughs> <laughs> kind of hand you something that is just from a different planet. You know, do you get that same buzz when you're when you're touring and you're in yeah. front of the band? Yeah, yeah, because they're they're sort of jazzers who are playing all you know all the time. They're doing gigs for people, you know, so they're not phased by anything. So if something goes down or you know there's well what I normally do is I get confused with the set list and I introduce a song which isn't coming next and they've quickly got it you know what I mean and I don't do it on purpose just to fuck with them I do it because I've I've fucked up yeah and that always is quite kind of thrilling to see them start a song right and then I've introduced a different thing and they kind of turn it into the one that I've just introduced stuff like that I always get you know a kick out of um and they yeah, they're just, it really kind of helps that they're as good as they are. And they are, yeah, I've seen them, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, you've seen them a few times, yeah, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, they're pretty tasty. Matt, um, I think you should just carry on not having a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Bless you. And another one is done. Brilliant stuff. I, I love Matt a bit. I'm so chuffed that he came on because do you know what? He doesn't do a lot of these things. I know he's been on uh, the brilliant Adam Buxton's podcast. Um, and now he's been on the Two Shot podcast. But he doesn't tend to do loads of these things. So we're really thrilled that he came on. Um, and we really hope you enjoyed listening to it. You get to find out a little bit more about the man behind Toast, amongst other brilliant things. Um, if, you ha if you've never seen a show that Matt did with Rich Fulcher many moons ago called Snuffbox, I think it might still be up on YouTube, or certain snippets are. Go and seek that out. It's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that is all. I'm going to leave you. Thanks so much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day or night, depending on when you're listening. And we'll see you next week for episode 42. I've been Craig Parkinson. He's been producer Griff. And this has been the Two Shot Podcast. You take care. Stay safe. I'll see you next week. Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Them Thickens. Cheers. Cheers.